Hey guys, welcome to my channel or welcome back to my channel. I'm gonna show you guys how I made this shirt today. It's really easy and this shirt was actually a shirt that I put in the indigo vat and it got no resist. And then I got this idea to make a really cute window pane plaid. So I'm gonna show you all the steps and let's get started. So I'm going to be using this jacquard white paint that I got on Amazon and I used it in another video of mine where I did some stenciling and this stuff is really great. So I have a lot of it and I'm gonna use it for another project. I'm also gonna be using some freezer paper and this stuff is awesome because you can iron it on to fabric and then it comes right off. So before I get started, I'm gonna prep the shirt by putting some cardboard inside of it and that's going to prevent the paint from transferring from the front to the back. I wanna make sure that what I paint on the front stays on the front and what I paint on the back stays on the back. Also, the cardboard is going to help to keep the shirt taut so that I can get a nice crisp line when I'm ironing and painting. I'm also going to put some cardboard in the sleeves. All right, so I'm going to cut out my strips for my plaid. And I'm just going to cut the length of my t-shirt here. I want to make sure that my strips are long enough to cover the entire length of the shirt and then I'm going to score my paper every two inches or so and then I'm going to cut the strips and I am not making them perfectly straight. I kind of want them to be a little bit wavy so um, I want them to be perfectly imperfect if that makes sense but if there's jagged edges I'm going to just trim off those jagged edges to make it smooth and undulating. And I'm not sure exactly how many I cut, but I cut a bunch of them so that I had enough for the front and the back. So once I get my strips cut out, I'm going to iron them onto the shirt and I am going to put them about a centimeter or two apart from each other. And I'm using my sort of junky iron. I have multiple irons. I'm not using my Rowenta, which is my nice iron that I use only for sewing. So I have separate irons for different projects. And if you're going to thrift stores and you see an iron, I always suggest just picking it up for projects like this. So you can see the spacing here. It's perfectly imperfect. And now it's finally time to paint. So I'm going to get my fabric paint. I'm just using a little plate here and a small brush. I'm gonna mix in a little bit of water just to make sure that it's a little on the sheer side because I wanna get that nice plaid look where they cross, I want it to be darker. But once I get the nice consistency, I'm just gonna to start to brush it into the little gaps between the strips of freezer paper and work my way through the entire shirt. I actually ended up using quite a lot of the paint, so this project did take more paint than I thought it would. And that's another reason why I think it's a great idea to just add a little bit of water. So once I get it totally covered, I'm gonna let it start to dry. So after about three hours, it was mostly dry, it was a little tacky, but I'm gonna turn it over and do the same thing on the back. Okay, so this has been drying overnight. I am going to pull off these stripes. Next. All right. This was extremely satisfying to peel off the freezer paper. And uh, you can see I got a few little bubbles of fabric paint at the top there by the collar which is a little bit of a bummer, but this is the first try of this sort of plaid that I have done, so I'm okay with it. And I think if I do this again, I'll probably do it just on yardage. I think that doing this pattern on a completely flat piece of fabric would be way easier than doing it on a t-shirt. But again, I think that the t-shirt turned out great, so no regrets. Hey guys, it's me again, and I just wanted to remind you to hit the like button and subscribe to my channel if you're enjoying this video. All right, back to the video. So now I'm gonna be doing the same thing with my freezer paper and putting the strips on in a perpendicular fashion. 
I'm not going to lie, this project did take a little bit of time just because I had to wait for the paint to dry in between coats and um, switching directions, but it wasn't particularly difficult and I think it was worth the time investment. So I got all of my perpendicular strips on and I'm going to do the top one, which is actually coming off of the shoulders and the collar. So now I'm going to add my paint going uh, the opposite direction and it's a little bit transparent. You can see here that when I'm going over the previous lines, it makes a little bit more of an opaque check or square, which is exactly what I'm looking for because when a plaid is actually woven, it has that same effect. All right, so now I'm going to take the freezer paper off and iron it to set it. Another thing I forgot to mention is that when I was painting, I put a black trash bag in between the shirt and the cardboard just to make sure that the paint didn't stick to the cardboard. After I got all the freezer paper off of it, I took it off of the cardboard frame and I'm going to give it a little press with my iron. This is going to help to dry it and also set the paint. All right, so now I'm going to wash and dry it and see how it looks. All right, so here is the finished shirt and I'm just going to turn it inside out and give it a nice press to set the fabric uh, paint. Now that it's been washed and dried, I'm not as worried about the paint coming off onto my iron, but I'm turning it inside out to make sure that there is no chance of it happening. And you can see I'm using my better iron. Okay, here is a close-up of the reveal, and I really love it. I like the hand-painted look of this window pane plaid. I think it's really charming. This pattern is a little tricky when it comes to the sleeves, but I think that if you were doing this pattern on just plain fabric and it was nice and flat, it would be a lot easier. Let me know down in the comments if you have ever used fabric paint to make a plaid and what colors you used and how it turned out. Thank you guys so much for watching and if you like this video, be sure to check out these other videos that I think you'll enjoy. If you make this project, be sure to tag me on Instagram at Onyx Art Studios. I love to see what you guys are up to. All right, see you guys next time. Bye.